What is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube and tonight I've got some football focus. The Pittsburgh Steelers just finished their Week 12 matchup with the Indianapolis Colts on the road in Monday Night Football of the 2022 NFL season. Obviously the Steelers coming in, what, 3-7, and seven, have not been playing the best, but the last couple of weeks we've seen them on a bit of an uptick. We saw two weeks ago against New Orleans, Pittsburgh playing a fairly complete game, one of the better games of their season, getting a nice win under Kenny Pickett's belt. Last week, we had the game against the Bengals, which we had our best first half by far, best half of football in general by far, of the entire season, and then looked very flat and got dominated in the second half. And then this game here tonight. Now, this was what a doctor would prescribe for a bad team, right? We're playing against Indianapolis. They are one of the weaker defenses to me in the entire league. They're they're kind of a middle of the road, but a slightly below average team. They're considered in the playoff hunt, but they're outside the playoff seedings. They're not terrible, but they're not great by any means. They're probably a little ahead of us on the totem pole, but they're still not great. Offensively, they have a lot of potential. Um, defensively, it's one of the weaker teams in the league. Uh, so you kind of expect to see, after Kenny Pickett had such a good first half last week, you want to see if this offense can build against a bad defense. And running has been a staple of ours the last couple of weeks, and, and Indy's run defense is very porous and very weak, and the tackling isn't great, and the coverage is inconsistent. So you expect to see Steeler football continuing to evolve toward the end of this season. Um, <clears throat> Indy coming in again has been up and down, Coaching changes, quarterback changes, they are not the stable franchise they once were. They are looking now to move on to their next kind of franchise quarterback, but Matt Ryan is still there in the twilight of his career. But anyway, uh, Pittsburgh comes out, and the first half plays out much in, in a lot of similar ways as it did last week, at least offensively, against the Bengals. Defensively, even better. So Pittsburgh comes out and tops their best first half last week against the Bengals, and has their best best half of the entire season again this week against the Colts. We come out looking very good. Um, I think they said it was like five out of six drives in the first half. All had multiple first downs. All were all wound up being on the Colts side of the field. Even when we weren't scoring points, Pittsburgh was moving the ball. There was progressive ball movement on every drive in the first half. Even though we weren't really scoring touchdowns, so we came out. Uh, got a field goal, and then got a nice turnover right away, but then couldn't capitalize on it, but then came back down, settled for another field goal. So it was kind of frustrating. Pittsburgh's moving the ball consistently, looking pretty sharp, and just kind of, as is their recent MO, unable to punch the ball into the end zone uh, to, to finish drives. So we're scoring points, but we're not blowing anybody away. But the defense played lights out, played absolutely excellent. Uh, the Colts really only had one one uh, field goal drive in the first half, and that was on a kick return, really, to set it up for them. Uh, so, so Pittsburgh, in general, comes out, looks really, really good in this half, gets out to a 16-3 lead. Uh, the Colts go to kick a field goal at the end of the first half. Uh, Isaiah Loudermilk blocks it. Yeah, Pittsburgh scores uh, scores one touchdown in the uh, in the first half. That was a Najee Harris run. Steelers wind up going up 16-3, to looking good in every phase of the game. I mean, they got a sack in the first half. They got a turnover. The D was stopping everyone. Uh, the offense was clicking and finally got went in for a score toward the end of the half. So all of a sudden you go up 16 to three. You're thinking, okay, Pittsburgh's going to go keep it together. They're going to atone for last week's horrible second half. And then in the third quarter, the Colts come out and dominate. The Colts find their way both in giving Jonathan Taylor the ball, which they weren't doing in the first half. If you guys don't know Jonathan Taylor, he's one of the harder runners in the entire NFL. He's this absolute phenom who scored 18 touchdowns last year. He's a big physical guy who gets better as the game goes on. He's a big bruising back like a Derrick Henry style who finds creases and holes and can just like make the most out of tiny gaps and he can drag guys to make, you know, to take little one or two yard runs and turn them into four, five, six, seven yard runs. He does that better than anybody or as well as anybody in the NFL and he wasn't getting the ball in the first half. In the second half, they wised up and start giving the ball to him, and our tacklers had a hard time dragging him down. So again, those little two-yard runs were turning into six- and seven-yard runs. And then passing-wise, we totally shut them down in the first half. Really good good ball skills in the air, good coverage, cutting off routes, keeping them short, uh, running up and tackling, getting off the field on third downs. Big strength on defense until the second half. They started to find Jelani Woods, the rookie tight end. Our safeties and linebackers could not cover him and we were doing a lot of zone coverage today, which really didn't set well with us because uh, Michael Pittman on the outside, but especially Jelani Woods on the inside, was victimizing us. He had one key drop in the first half, but after that, 
He had eight total catches in this game, which is more than his uh, entire career in the NFL so far. So he was sitting down in the zones and making good plays there. He was beating a couple of our inside linebackers and safeties off the ball. That has been a problem for us the entire time. But I think we were just calling some bad defenses because I saw a lot of guys sitting down in zones and he was finding the, the holes in those zones. So the Colts got better on offense, came out and caught up to us. It went from a 16-3 lead to a 17-16 Colts lead, two consecutive touchdowns, outscoring us 14-0 in the third quarter. And you're thinking, here we go again, another complete meltdown. Pittsburgh then came back and answered. Pittsburgh got it back on offense and started getting more pressure on defense. And they walk away in week 12 here with a 24-17 victory. So Pittsburgh does rally at the end. Again, a horrible third quarter, one of the worst of the year after one of the after the best half of the entire year. And then come back in the fourth quarter. They get a go-ahead touchdown. They get an awesome two-point conversion. They get a couple sacks later in the game, and they hold off the Colts to uh, win a much closer game than it should have been. Again, they outscored us in the second half um, pretty pretty harshly until that uh, fourth-quarter touchdown drive. So here are the stats. Kenny Pickett, here's his day. Fairly pedestrian numbers, but again, you're seeing some positives, right? 20 of 28, 174 yards, no touchdowns, no picks but also had six carries for 32 yards. Discussing Pickett again, there's more good and more bad, right? So he's looking downfield more. Biggest thing, once again, he's not just taking the ball and running like he was against the Saints. He's running when he needs to, six carries for 32 yards. He's picking very smart runs, and he's angling himself nicely toward the first down markers. He's aware He's aware of where he is on the field. He's picking the right times to run, and he's getting himself good angles. But also, when he's moving outside the pocket and, 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 he's, and he's going uh, wide around his blockers, he's looking downfield. He's looking to pass first. He's looking a little more comfortable sitting in the pocket. This was reminiscent of... The first half last week against the Bengals, he's looking pretty good sitting in the pocket. The problem is his accuracy still isn't entirely there. He's had some problems with some out routes. He missed uh, Deontay Johnson was open on a comeback route one time and he missed him really high. He missed George Pickens on a really good, Pickens ran a really good in and out kind of route uh, to the back corner of the end zone and a play that he was wide open on. Excellent route by, by George Pickens. Totally missed by Kenny Pickett. Uh, a couple of times over the middle, I think he missed Fryermuth on one as well. So, Yes, he is running at the right times. He is uh, looking downfield more. He's taking some more shots. The playbook is opening up for him a little more, but he's still inconsistent. There are still times that I think he has people that that he's not finding them because he's getting a little too antsy in the pocket. There are still times that he has guys that he's missing wildly, especially on the outside in this game. In the past, I feel like he's been high over the middle. This game, he was very high on the outside. So you have to uh, do a better job with those. But I'll discuss the receivers here in a second as well. Um, did not think I'd be saying this in 2022. Benny Snell football is back. Uh, the t- two of the leading rushers tonight that I want to talk about on offense are Benny Snell and Anthony McFarland. Is this 2022 or is this 2020 all over again? Really weird to be discussing these two guys. So uh, right away we'll say Najee Harris has been, been playing banged up for a long time now, and he got banged up in this game as well. He wound up going out of this game uh, at the end of the first half and not returning. He left on the last drive of the first half for us and did not return, so didn't play the second half at all. And Jalen Warren, our backup running back, who's been very good for us, uh, did not play in this game. He's been injured as well. So Benny Snell got the bulk of the work today, and Anthony McFarland uh, was called up from the practice squad, which is a nice call-up because he was battling uh, Jalen Warren, very similar style, kind of scat back, uh, speedy style. Uh, he was he was battling Warren in the preseason, got called up from the practice squad, made the most of the opportunities today. Benny Snell. This stat line really impresses me. 12 carries, 62 yards, and a touchdown. He looked like he was fighting for his job tonight. Benny Snell had something to prove. He's been the like third running back on this team for, for all season and has not had any carries at all this year until tonight. Najee Harris is a bell cow, and Jalen Warren stepped up big time this year, so Snell has no spot on this team besides special teams. He played lights out tonight. I mean, making the most of small holes, getting skinny when he had to, running through guys, finishing tackles. I always thought that finishing strong and finishing tackles, finishing through tackles. I always thought that uh, running through tackles and finishing strong was not his strength, even though Benny Snell football, like Tomlin calls it, has always been the power game. Benny Snell was never that good at his own game. That power game didn't suit him very well. He wouldn't always finish, and he wouldn't bounce off guys. Tonight, he was finishing strong, 
running through guys, again, doing the Derrick Henry thing where you take a two or three yard run, making it more, um, really had good vision. He was, he was patient tonight, where I feel like he usually would just kind of take the ball and fall forward, and he would get little resistance on his tackles. Tonight, he showed a little patience. He took his time to find the right hole, put his foot in the ground, and went forward, much like Najee Harris has been doing in the last couple of weeks since he's gotten better out there. But Benny Snell tonight, 12-62-1, big key touchdown for us, taking the ball, running around uh, an outside tight end block. Or I, I think it was Gunnar Olszewski got, got the seal block on the edge, and uh, Snell runs it in for the go-ahead touchdown. Really a big fan of Benny Snell's game tonight. Hats off. Give, give that guy a game ball. Najee Harris did have uh, 10 carries for 38 yards, I believe this says, 38 or 35. 10 carries for 30-something yards and a touchdown, uh, opening opening touchdown of the game for us uh, in the first half. Played okay, nothing special, but then got hurt at the end of the first half. Hope he's okay because now our two starting running backs both are dinged up, and Najee has had some problems with injuries uh, playing unhealthy this season. So that is a big player we need out there, especially after his last two weeks. Um, when it, okay, wide receivers. George Pickens, three catches, 57 yards, and Deontay Johnson, five catches, 49 yards to lead the way. There's good and bad in both these performances, too. Uh, George Pickens had a few really nice plays. Like I said, the one route that he was wide open in the back of the end zone, the picket missed. That was a great job by Pickens. Uh, the Kenny Pickett could not get the ball there. Uh, Pickens also had a really nice catch. It was like a 35-yarder downfield. Kenny Pickett just threw a go ball downfield, and Pickens went got himself in front of the receiver, untangled himself, got up, high-pointed the ball with his hands, tapped his toes. He is, I don't want to say the best in the league already at that because we've only seen him for 10 games or whatever, but my God, he's so good at those one-on-one balls. He's so good in the air. He's good at locating the ball. He's good at physicality. He's good at taking his hands away from his body and catching with his hands. He's good at uh, locating the sideline. He's just got a veteran mentality. He's so strong, and he just plays above his size so often. It's exhilarating. He's so good downfield. He's such a target, but it's not like he's just a speed guy. He gets down there and he gets positioning and he gets the hands away from the body and he finds the sideline. For a rookie that's that young, playing with a rookie quarterback, that connection looks really strong and could be stronger as we go on. But he also did drop two balls today as well. Uh, Two balls in a row. One was a third down conversion that Kenny threw uh, it was a little low. It was like a 14-yard ball across the middle. Pickett, uh, Pickens came down, slid feet first, and tried to slide into the catch, and the ball moved uh, on the ground. And then in the next series, he came back for a comeback ball. Um, Pickett was coming back toward the quarterback, went down to the ground, caught it, but the ball hit the ground. So two key drops for Pickens today. I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna ride him too hard because he did make some pretty nice catches. Did come back on on the next series after those two drops and make a really nice slant inside slant catch that was very tough. Also, caught a two-point conversion after that Benny Snell touchdown. Caught a really nice uh, kind of like inside-out fake where he he was on the inside, made a fake back to the inside, cut back outside in the corner of the back end zone and uh, knelt down and caught the ball and a really key two-point conversion to get the score to 24-17. Deontay, like I said, 5 for 49, was targeted more, played pretty well, um, but also did drop a ball as well in the end zone. He had a chance for a touchdown catch, um, had the ball in his hands, kind of knocked it off his wrist. His wrist or his arm kind of knocked the ball out. He had good positioning, and it looked like he was going to come down with it, and he just he couldn't follow through with the catch. So some good catches today, played pretty well, but did drop a key touchdown. So got to take some points off there. So a little easier on Pickett uh, today as well. Again, wasn't always accurate, was a little antsy at times, um, was a little conservative at times. That's mostly the play calling. But a couple drops from the receivers, too. So I am encouraged by this game um, just like I was the first half of the last game. Last game's two quarters, and this game's uh, quarters one, two, and four. Three quarters tonight really encouraged me overall. <laughs> uh, offensive line, it's kind of the same. Pickett did get sacked, I want to say, twice in this game. Uh, Dan Moore allowed a like a minus five or, five or seven yard uh, rushing play, got blown up. Um, also allowed, or had a holding penalty, which almost uh, led to a stalled drive, a 10-yard penalty. Got to clean those penalties up. I got to say Dan Moore is the weakest of all of the offensive linemen. I'll just say it again. But overall, not a terrible game. They did allow some holes. All three running backs and the quarterback ran for over 30 yards, and the passing game was 
pretty decent, uh, even though it was conservative tonight. So the line wasn't all terrible, but I did think Dan Moore had a pretty weak game, personally. Defensively, uh, 17 points allowed, only three in the first half. Uh, very, very encouraging first half on defense. Excellent stuff, in spite of the fact that there wasn't a ton of pressure. Second half, the pressure got better, but the Colts just got a lot better. I, I, the, the coaching, uh, the adjustments they made, again, feeding Jonathan Taylor, finding that tight end Jelani Woods in the uh, the creases in the zone defense, and having him also beat a couple of our guys in man. Um, splash plays, though. Justin Lane. I'm sorry, I almost did it again. I always call James Pierre Justin Lane. I confuse those two a lot, and I guess we can see why after uh, where Pierre's been on the bench lately, but we have a lot of injuries. Weatherspoon didn't play, and, and I still think that uh, the guy we traded for, Campbell, uh, is hurt as well. So we are down to Pierre as our third outside corner. Uh, but James Pierre made a really nice interception. He was on the outside on a like a pick play, following the outside guy, saw the inside throw by Matt Ryan, and jumped the pass in a very nice interception, kind of similar to the one that Levi Wallace had last week. Excellent read on that play. Um, Alex Highsmith with a sack and a forced fumble. He's had a pretty solid season. Terrell Edmonds and Arthur Mallette both also got a sack today. Um, overall on defense, again, uh, really encouraged by the first half. Second half, not as much. Tackling Jonathan uh, Taylor was, was quite a challenge for us. The corners continue to give me a mixed bag. I was just about to say that I really like Levi Wallace's ball tracking. He had two really good knockdowns, and he had a couple of like seals where the guy was going deep and he cut the guy's uh, path off. Had a couple really nice positioning things, but then he also had um, a he had he had a play on Michael Pittman when Pittman went on the inside, uh, went for the post. He was on the inside, and uh, Wallace or Levi Wallace played too far on the outside. Pittman gets the catch, and Wallace still goes to the head and gets a penalty on top of giving the catch up. So he gets a pass interference and also gives the catch up. Uh, so, yeah, Wallace has been inconsistent. There's times that I really like what he's doing with physicality. I think he, he locates the ball pretty well. Uh, and then there's also there's times where I'm just like, I don't, ah, I don't understand how he's getting these penalties or how he's in the wrong spot. Cam Sutton, same way. Cam Sutton had a couple really nice plays today. Uh, one was downfield on a third down, getting our defense off the field on a nice knockdown. Uh, and then a couple other ones he gets beat on. So it just like... Every single week, I want to say good things about these corners, and I have to also say bad things about these corners. The only safe, or the only, the only defensive back that I can consistently praise is Mika Fitzpatrick, who's really good at reading those short dump off plays. When it's third and medium to third and long, Minka reads those middle of the field plays so well and delivers the hits so consistently. Even he's been getting beat over the top a little bit, but tonight it was more so about his good tackling. Uh, but yeah, so inconsistent for the defense. Special teams, I want to say Matthew Wright once again, having a good season in the stead of Chris Boswell. He had that one bad week, his first week here. Um, was 3-for-3 three three again tonight, three field goals all made. Made his extra points as well. Really like what he's been doing, playing good ball. Uh, Presley Harvin, another really good game tonight. He's been quieting some doubters in the last couple of weeks. He had four punts for 182 yards, and I, I believe he had two punts inside the 20, including uh, the one for the, the, the last second drive. Uh, that the Colts were trying to tie the game with. So Harvin had a nice game. Loudermilk blocked the field goal at the end of the first half. Want to shout him out as well. Uh, kick coverage, not always the best. The uh, Colts had two good kick returns tonight, including one that went 80-plus yards for the back of the end zone all the way inside our 20, which allowed some points. So we got to get better on that end. But anyway, Pittsburgh gets off to a hot start, uh, rallies after the Colts come back, and staves off the Colts on both sides of the field. Uh, pretty consistent game for three out of the four quarters minus the third. Overall, what did you think? Pittsburgh wins 24-17 and goes now to 4-7, and seven, I believe is our record. Let me know in the comments below who impressed you and who did not. Please tell me down below what your thoughts on this game were. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like these deep dives where I go into all these players and details. And uh, come back next week for more Steelers. So I will see you guys soon. Go Steelers.